Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode whatever the fuck of the Speared Sundays podcast. What a rough start. Had a bit of a break and you think I'd be back on it. And uh, no, uh, not back on it. Back on doing the podcast, but have it not, ba- not back to doing the podcast in, in any kind of improved way. Not, not better in any way, shape or form after the break that I've had. Uh, yes, had a big break. I think I uh, had took few weeks off uh just finished the tour and i thought you know what if i have to sit down in this fucking warehouse and talk for an hour i'm gonna shoot myself in the brain so instead of doing that i decided to take a little holiday and by holiday what i really mean is try to take a holiday uh but instead sit on my phone answering emails and texts about comedy and touring and merch and bullshit so i haven't had much of a holiday but on the plus side, I did miss three episodes of the Speared Sunnies podcast in a row. So I don't really know what I'm doing with my life. No, to be honest, guys, um, did need a bit of a break. Uh, I want to say thank you so much to everyone who came out to No Slide Season. What a fucking tour, man. That was so fun. That was, that was definitely the best tour I've had uh, in terms of like show quality fun for me the people after the show audience size heaps more people came than last year so hey man that's that's all you can really ask for as a comedian is to do a better show than last year for more people than showed up last year and that's what we did this year so thank you so much to everyone who came out all the people who made me art look at this hey eh? someone made me a bit of art i don't know what i'm gonna do with all this shit that you guys make me i'm not throwing it out because i'm not a fucking asshole um, but I, I, I don't know what to do with it. There's no way for, nowhere for me to put it. I think I'm just going to archive it and save it because I would hate to be that guy who's like, oh, fuck, I don't have any room, bins it all, and then when I'm 50 and I think of all the nice things that people made me and I want to look at it and it's all gone, I would hate to be that cunt. So I'm going to save all this shit. I want to hang up some of it and, and, uh, and I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest, but I am going to save it because I think that's really sweet. You cunts making me shit after, hey? Oh, look at bloody Lewis Spears. Everybody thinks that he's a cunt, but they meet him and he's a real sweetheart. Number one thing said to me when I meet new people, even if they're not fans, thanks for being nice. So you thought I was going to be a cunt. Thanks for thinking I'm an asshole. Who's the real cunt, huh? It's me. It's always me. Um, So yeah, man, I had a great tour. Um, And to be honest, dude, I... uh, me needing a break is only partly reason why I've missed uh, episodes and haven't filmed. The real reason is, bro, I got a new neighbor uh, at the warehouse and he loves listening to uh, to uh, hard style. Got a new speaker in, loves his hard style for hours. The, the walls that separate us, they're tin, right? Everyone can hear everyone. Wasn't, wasn't an issue for anyone. You know, I would scream cunt for an hour. Twice a week, no worries. Someone will be going Reek! for 40 minutes a week, no worries. Old mate loves his hard style. About six hours of the day, quite literally listening to hard style. Yesterday, I think he listened to Top Gear episodes through speakers for four hours. I wanted uh, Jeremy Clarkson to actually appear in real life and run me over with an RV because I was so sick of fucking Top Gear. Um, made it very hard to record anything, really. Uh, so that's... To be honest, the main reason why none of the episodes have come out. I've had to come here at fucking uh, like 7 or 8 p.m. Uh, when nobody else is here to record. So I think that's what I'm going to do from now on is, is record later in the day when everybody else has gone home because uh, otherwise you're going to have to listen to uh, a podcast that is 40% me and 60% Jeremy Clarkson going, whoa, what an engine. Uh, and nobody really wants to listen to that, really. It's more like one or, one or the other. Both good things. Top Gear, very good show. Top Gear listened through a tin wall or played on someone else's speakers without any kind of visuals. Just sounds like a lot of uh, engine and banter. Not really enjoyable to watch. So who knows? Um, we are really looking um we're really looking at uh moving out hopefully next year thanks to all the supporters on patreon that are that are keeping this this whole fucking ship from barely sinking we're looking at moving out 
next year because uh, this is getting a little bit ridiculous. We just got internet installed. We figured out a way to get internet, so that's finally here. Um, but I really just want to get out of here because it's just not... It's getting worse and worse. As, as everybody else moves into their perspective warehouses, for me, it's getting worse. Before, it was fucking perfect because I was kind of the only person here. Everybody else, all my neighbors were just like storage. But now that there are people running businesses as well, out of here it's kind of not very good so we're trying to get out of here um and because of patreon and the tour it's looking like that might be able to happen if it kicks up a little bit but we'll see we'll see um mainly just very grateful dude it's very cool you know living the dream anyway enough about me huh how, how are you how the fuck are you good that's good um what else what do i don't want to talk about here oh yeah that's right um disney plus is out and with that, the new series, The Mandalorian, has come out. That's cool, you know? Star Wars TV series looks really good. Uh, something that I keep seeing too much of, though, is Baby Yoda, okay? I'm going to say it right here, right now. If I saw Baby Yoda on the street, I would treat him like a crunchy-looking leaf, and I would cross the road to step on him and crush him to death. Baby Yoda sucks. Baby Yoda is a merchandising opportunity by Disney Plus created just before the Christmas rush to, to make viral memes of, oh, look, it's Yoda, but he's got big eyes and little hands, and that tricks our human psychology in wanting to protect him and look after it because it looks like a baby because that's how our stupid primate brains work. And now I'm going to fucking buy a plushie of Baby Yoda. You know why they call him Baby Yoda? Because because that's who makes the plushies. Babies in China. They have to make those fucking Baby Yoda plushies and pop figurines so that neckbeards and girls with no boyfriends can put it on their shelf while, while fucking Jong Yang whips children. Faster! We need more Baby Yodas! He's going viral on Twitter, just as planned. Please, Master, I've made 75,000 Baby Yodas. My fingers are bleeding. Back to work, Ping. We need more Baby Baby Yodas. I haven't seen my parents for days. They're dead. We threw them in the mines for talking shit about Hong Kong. That's what it is, man. Baby Yoda is uh, is is just being made by child slaves. Now, uh, I will say, yes, I have an iPhone. Yes, that was made by children. Yes. I would never buy an iPhone if it was made by adults because it would be too expensive. And yes, I own Nike shoes, which are made by children. Yes. And yes, I am a hypocrite. And also, have I seen The Mandalorian? No, I have not. I have not seen The Mandalorian. Do I know if or how Baby Yoda integrates and affects the plot? No, I don't. Uh, but will I hate him? with zero reason and talk shit about him on Twitter to make people angry? Absolutely yes. Baby Yoda deserves nothing more than a swift punt and a slow death. Fuck Baby Yoda, man. He's like porgs, but green. Disney is the absolute king of inventing completely useless characters that are only there to sell merchandise. They're the fucking absolute king of just unbridled creative uh exploitation of idiots with money like that's the only thing disney exists is to create stuff that fucking makes money i've just realized that what i'm describing now is a business <laughs> oh why does this business only make shit that makes money gee i don't know fuck it because it's a business that's what they're there for what what i mean is Disney, everyone thinks is this, oh, it's this fucking creative wonderland. No, it's not, okay? It's this evil global mega corporation that doesn't pay tax and bends the knee to Chinese dictators for money. That's what they're for, bro. That's, Disney is the kind of fucking company that goes, oh, look, we're so progressive. We put gay characters in the new Disney film. And then you watch the film and they're on screen for fucking 35 seconds. They're aliens. You can't even really tr tell what gender they are. And then when you watch the movie in China, they've completely edited out the scene. That's how useless the characters are. And Chinese 
government hates the gays, so get rid of them for money. That's Disney, bro. So, like, oh, we're so progressive, but only in markets that want progressiveness, right? You know, oh, let's watch um, Inside Out. I wonder, Inside Out, what's Inside Out about? Oh, well, Inside Out steps into a girl's head and we see all of her emotions and characters. Oh, wow, that's what the movie is about in um, in America, at least. If you watch the film in Saudi Arabia, it's just about a girl who can't leave the house without a chaperone. Because <laughs> that's what makes money there. And the movie in China is just about how Tiananmen Square never happened. Inside out. Tiananmen Square didn't happen. What about all the video footage and the photos? Nah. You know what's really interesting is watching uh, on, um, in Australia, we have lots and lots of Chinese um, immigrants, obviously, because we're so close, right? And we have heaps and heaps of Chinese students in universities. And I'm in Melbourne, which is like the social justice capital of the fucking country, right? So what you get to see is all of these brainwashed Chinese immigrant students fighting with all of these brainwashed uh, social justice warriors with front fringes arguing over the Chinese government and both of them are just incredibly fucking wrong and insane but I'm watching this shit like it's gladiator fights it is so fucking interesting because both of them are wrong like the Chinese students get on there and they're, they're like fighting an uphill battle, bro. First of all, they're brainwashed. They've owned, they, they don't even know how to use Google, right? They've grown up in a system that has, has censored all of the information they've ever seen from their birth. So they come in knowing 100% of the facts if they were in China, but missing realistically about 70% of the information. Like, bro, Tiananmen Square never happened. And China's a great place to live, especially if you're Muslim. And then all of the fucking front fringes come in and they go, we know everything about China. And then they just say a whole bunch of fucking wrong facts that they've read on fucking Twitter that were probably invented by like American spies and put on Twitter. Like the same way that Russian bots are supposed to be doing to the American election. You fucking know that America is meddling in that Hong Kong shit. Absolutely. It's so funny when, like, when, when you realize that you're, oh, that's the only information that we're seeing. If fucking Russia's trying to meddle in the American elections, of course we're trying to meddle in their fucking shit. We've been doing that forever. We, in, let's be honest, we invented that game. Uh, well, not we, America invented that shit. Well, not America, England did. They were just like, oh, we invented boats first, so let's kill everyone and take their shit. <laughs> and that's why white people can't wear dreadlocks, because that's cultural appropriation and Vikings didn't exist. Hey, look at me. The supreme centrist. Everyone's wrong. Except for me! That's a, You know why I keep making taking the piss out of all sides in everything? Is I don't think there's any fucking sane people left on the internet. They've all left. Why is it that I can always have like a nuanced conversation with someone in real life, but the minute you jump on Twitter... 100% of cunts are just insane and everyone's either 100% right or 100% wrong and no matter what side of the fence you're on, you cannot move or capitulate. Oh, one second. Jazzy's calling me. I'll ask her. Hey, baby, you're on the podcast. Welcome. Hi. Hey. Podcast? Spearhead Sundays. I have a question. Oh. Yes. Why is it that when that I can talk about politics normally in real life with anyone, but the minute yeah. you start talking about it online, everyone's fucking insane and everyone thinks they're 100% right. Because no one online can shoot you. Ah, so so what we need is more guns. Thanks, baby. Yeah. Okay, bye. Bye. What did you actually want? I'm coming over now. Ah, oh, okay. When are you going to be here? Um, 30 minutes. Do you want grilled? Um, no, I'm good. Do you guys want okay. grilled? Nah, they're not here. They're listening to this on Sunday. 
the grilled will be off by the time they get it. Ew. Okay. I go. I actually gotta go. I'm driving. Okay. Bye. Don't crash. Bye. So the answer is more guns. I'm glad that we got that sorted. That's what we really fucking need. But yeah, man, it, this... Uh, you know what it is? It's just anyone with, like, a fucking brain has gone, oh, the internet's insane, so I'm going to stop looking at it and engaging. Right? Anyone with an actual mind for politics that isn't trying to make that their career. Do you know what I mean? Like, There's very smart political figures out there that are making politics their career. Yeah, like I'm going to be a commentator and that's going to be my job. But any like normal person who likes politics a little bit and has something to say has just checked out and gone, well, I am not talking about this shit online. But even all those, even like all those fucking like YouTubers and political, oh, hey babe, what's up? I just called back to plug my podcast. Oh, aren't you driving? Yeah, I am driving. But Lewis is going to be on my podcast this week, so tune in to Ravenous with Jasmine Artio. Yep. And that will be really good. Okay, don't shoot me. All right, bye. For fuck's sake, what a sneaky plug. Anyway, it's like, yeah, anyone who actually knows what they're talking about but isn't trying to make a career out of it has just completely checked out of that world because the only people in it are like, the debate kings, Ben Shapiro. Um, actually, according to this and that, and then all of his fans who were like, bro, you just got wrecked. You just got destroyed. But then there's the other side of it. It's like fucking Clementine Ford going, oh, let's cut the penises off men. Oh, no, I just gave birth to a male. Fuck, I better tone it down a little bit. That's what happened with her. She went so hard against the anti-men thing and then she gave birth to a male and she's toned it the fuck down because she's gone, oh, no, a man that I love. Oh, fuck, I just... No, oh, I can't be mean about all of them now. Fuck, I guess I'll, I guess I'll tone it back. <laughs> That's you know what's interesting is like people like I think there's a there's a real the whole conversation online is not actually about changing anybody's mind. It's about winning the debate because I think there's such a like debating. And discussing ideas are such different skills, right? So Ben Shapiro, a dude who knows his shit back to front and is an incredible debater, will fucking destroy anyone, even if he's wrong, because he is a better debater, because that's a separate skill, yeah? I, I honestly believe this. Like, a, a really good debater could argue their way even when being wrong, into being seen right. And I know Ben's not the best example. I'm just thinking of, like, he's, like, the most prominent fucking debate king. I'm not saying all the shit that he, he debates is wrong. But, like, I, th I honestly think that that cunt is so fucking good at debating and using words to confound somebody else that if you actually sat next to him uh, and, and tried to debate that 2 plus 2 is 4, I reckon he could get everyone in the crowd to be like, oh, what a fucking idiot. It's obviously five, <laughs> right? Whereas versus actually having a conversation with someone who, who you may not know, there is no fucking way uh, you can convince someone if you're debating them. Do you know what I mean? You're just trying to be seen as correct, which doesn't really convince anyone. It doesn't lead anyone to any sort of conclusion other than, ha, that other person's a fucking idiot. This guy's a sick cunt. Woohoo! Retweet. I don't know. That's why I, I, that's why I like fucking making fun of all sides as well when I'm doing comedy and shit. When I'm doing bi-monthly bull, I always, always try to be like, well, if I've made fun of a right-wing thing, the next story I want to make fun of a left-wing thing. Or if I make fun of Donald Trump, after that I want to make fun of a Democratic candidate. Because I think that there's, like, there's so much fucking division online 
where you're either this comedian or you're that comedian or you agree with this or you agree with that and no one fucking engages with each other. I think there's such a, a fucking desire of like people like me who see, I'm like, oh yeah, this guy's got some points. Oh yeah, that guy's got some points. Oh, but he's he's a fucking idiot in this way and they're a fucking idiot in that way. I think there's there's such a fucking need for someone who can just call out the bullshit on both sides. Because... I know that's the way the internet's going and, and like discourse is going. It's like you pick a team and you go, go team. You know, it's like being a fucking, oh no, I'm about to make a sports reference. It's like being a fan of the New York Knicks. I'd be like, I support the Knicks. They suck. Yeah, but I, I, I live in New York, so I got to support them and ah, oh, fuck. Anyway, guys. I'm officially back in the gym, okay? I took four weeks off after I hurt my neck from looking up. And watch this, guys. <sighs> Incredible. Left, right, all around. I haven't been able to do that for fucking weeks. I feel good. I've been to the gym two days a week this week, and I'm fucking back into it. My neck's strong again. I'm back. I'm trying to get my strong neck back. I lost it for a minute there, but I'm fucking back into it. I, surprisingly, I haven't lost any weight. Maybe like one or two kilos actually, but not that much. Normally when I stop gym, I just lose like five kilos actually, but I've kept my food up and I've, I've tried to keep eating and stay active um, and I haven't lost it, which is really, really good. Uh, so I'm back in the fucking gym. I, uh, I hopefully I'm not going to stop because uh, man, 2020, it's time for this fucking comedy special, dude. Absolutely. I'm so ready for another comedy special. We've been touring around with the touring the Luke and Lewis show around Australia. We've got Adelaide and Perth coming up this weekend. Uh, actually, you will have missed it. Oh no, we got Perth Sunday night. If you're in Perth, come along. Sorry, I'm fucking uh, exploding on the inside because for breakfast uh, today I decided to just go ham. I went to gym yesterday and whenever I go to gym like more than two days in a row, it just unlocks my appetite that previously d just doesn't exist. Normally, I just don't want to eat food ever. Like if I could just take a pill, honestly, if the choice was between, right, being able to enjoy food for the rest of my life or I take a pill once and I can never eat anything ever again, even if it's like good food, I can't even have dessert, right? I can't, have, I can't ever have food again. I would 100% take that pill. Don't enjoy eating. I like food. I don't enjoy eating. Am I insane? I might be. I just, I'm sick of it. I've tasted everything. I'm, I've been here for 25 years. I have to eat at least three times a day. I'm fucking over it. It's, it's the worst thing. I'm typing something. I'm writing something. I'm filming something. And then my body goes, oh, we need to eat food or we'll die. I'm like, oh, I got to put everything down just to feed this selfish cunt. Me. It's annoying. Could you ever think about that, about how much more productive you would be if you could just cut out one essential thing? Imagine no bathroom breaks ever. Lord knows that would save me a lot of time because every time I need to piss, I have to set the alarm, unlock the gate, close the door, fucking relock the gate, walk down the street, get to the bathroom door, realize that I forgot the bathroom key, come back, unlock the gate, go inside, lock the gate, open my door, unset the alarm, r grab the key, reset the alarm, open the door, close the door, open the gate, close the gate, walk up to the bathroom, unlock the bathroom door, close the bathroom door, go for, go for a fucking wee, and then unlock the bathroom door, walk down the street, unlock the gate, go through the gate, lock the gate, walk up to my door, unlock the door, go in the door, close the door, set off the alarm, put the bathroom key back, that's like 3,000 hours of my fucking life gone. If I never had to do that again, I would be so fucking happy. That's what I want to be, man. I want to be an android that just needs an oil change every 60 years, you know? That's what I really want to do. I just want to be a fucking android walking around. I look the, exactly the same as everyone else, except something's a little bit off about me. Like I don't really connect in social situations, which if I'm being honest, isn't too different from how I act now. Essentially, what I, want to, I, what I, what I really want to be is an autistic guy who doesn't need to wee ever. That's what I want. That would be fucking perfect for me. It's like, oh, fuck... Lewis is at the party. He's a bit strange, isn't he? Yeah, he's dancing. But uh, that's a bit weird because we're not playing any music. That's very fucking weird. Oh, well, at least he doesn't have to wee ever. What a cool guy. And then I'm just there fucking doing the robot to silence. That would be awesome. That would be my fucking dream. 
That and stepping on Baby Yoda while it fucking screamed in pain because I'm only stepping on its legs. I'm not killing it. I'm just like, fuck your legs. That would be great. That's my fucking dream. (laughs) But yeah, man. Been going to gym. It's been going great. Because it's time for the comedy special. And I'm telling you, bro, I am not going to step on that stage looking as skinny as I normally do. I've actually been fucking looking pretty good, dude. I've been looking pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I'm not there yet, but I've been looking pretty good. I took my shirt off the other day and I was like, who the fuck is that? Who is he? He looks great. Compared to how we looked at the start of the year, compared to someone who really looks great, compared to everybody else, he doesn't look that great, but compared to his previous experience of looking at himself in the mirror that guy looks great and that guy is me put him next to a normal guy no not the best but by himself compared to six months ago woo, he looks great and that's what i'm all about and that's what life's all about it's not about comparing yourself to the next guy oh this girl has bigger tits than me who cares you're not her fuck her tits they're gonna be down to her knees by the time she's 90 and also she never really developed an actual personality because guys bent over backwards to do anything for her because they wanted to touch her titties you got av- small to medium sized boobs you got a real personality that's gonna serve you better in the long run huh That's what I mean, man. Girls who are a seven, they live so much better lives than girls who are nine. They're nines. It's true, man. If you're, ladies, if you're a six to a seven, I get it, all right? I'm in that zone, you know? Sometimes you see somebody else and you go, why the fuck don't I look like that? Their life must be so fucking easy. And here's the thing. It is. And that's why in 20 years, their life is going to suck because the only asset they ever had, physical beauty, will be gone. Meanwhile, there'll be you and me with our fucking rocking personalities and our fucking seven, six to seven out of ten rigs and faces just living it up with our achievements and our partners that were based on emotional connection instead of physical attraction and money just partying it up while all of these fucking former 9 out of 10s are just looking at themselves going oh why aren't I as hot as I used to be guys don't hit on me in the street anymore my tits are down to my ankles nobody wants to put them in their mouth so I have to pay for my own drinks and I never learned how to play piano Fuck you if you're a 9 out of 10. Get out of here. Nah, nah, just kidding. Send me nudes. No, just kidding. Don't. Um, but that's, that's, that's it, man. If you're a fucking, if you're a 6 or a 7, I know. Especially if you're a teenager, feels like the whole world's against you. Why doesn't anyone want to take me to formal? Let me tell you, bro. Keep working that hobby. You got a special interest? Keep going with that shit. That was me, bro. No one wanted to go to formal with me now. Hey, Look at me now. I get DMs from chicks who wouldn't even fucking look at me in high school and I ignore them and it's the best feeling ever. Oh, you want to fuck me now, do you? What about when I asked you out uh, to go to formal with me in the school hallways in year 12 and you said, oh, I promised my girlfriends I was going to go with them and that hurt my little 7 out of 10 heart, especially when you rocked up with the fucking AFL guy. Well, you know what? That AFL guy added me on Facebook and I hit decline (laughs) because he didn't make it to the AFL but I made it in comedy Woo! and you don't get that if I was a 9 out of 10 I never would have done this shit no way so if you're a little bit ugly you should thank the Lord because you can hit the gym and have a personality bump yourself up a couple of points and end up with your fucking dream unless your dream is to become a model in which case you're fucked get a new dream you ugly cunt and uh, i hope that was all very motivational for you guys that's what you listen to the speared sundays podcast for huh me motivating all the uglies out there let's all see a show together also can i talk about something can you cunts not you guys, but just people in general. Can cunts just go to shit by themselves, please? 
what is people's obsession with needing to enjoy shit with someone else? Like, I can't tell you how many messages, Luke included, and fucking everybody I know that I sell, that sells tickets, even fucking musicians, right? I cannot tell you how many people hit me up and go, oh, I really want to come to your show, but I have nobody to go with, so I hope you have fun. Buy a ticket and go by yourself. What are you doing? You can't enjoy something by yourself? What the fuck's wrong with you? Just go by yourself. I never understood that shit. I lo- especially comedy, man. I mean, I kind of understand, I guess, if you're a girl, you, I suppose you want there's creepy cunts out there. But if it's something like a movie or a comedy show, go by yourself. It's at fucking 7.30 p.m. You can see a movie during the day. Go and enjoy that shit. Pursue your interest. Why do you need someone to hold your hand like you're nine years old just to enjoy something that you know you're going to enjoy? What are you worried about? What do you think is going to happen if you come to my show by myself? There are people that come by themselves to every show I do and they fucking love it. I see them. It's not It's not heaps of people, but there's like, you know, if I, if, if there's a, if I do 200 seats, six people, six to 10 people maybe come by themselves. I would love to see that number increase, right? Because, you know, one, that's more money for me. And I love selling tickets, but also I just want people to have a good time. And it sucks to, to, to see all these cunts on Twitter going, oh, I would really love to come, but I, I can't go by myself. It's like, why? What do you think is going to happen if you come to a comedy show by yourself? Do you reckon everyone's going to turn around like a fucking American growing up coming of age movie when you walk in a math class with a hickey on your neck and everybody turns around and goes oh Sarah came by herself let's get her and they fucking beat the shit out of each other what do you think is going to happen no one gives a fuck you come by yourself no worries as long as you don't come by yourself and with an AR-15 nobody really cares I go to shit by myself all the time it is the best way to enjoy yourself especially if it's like a niche interest like stand-up comedy kind of niche you know especially if you're going to see some like just one guy that you like you know obviously bring your friends i would prefer if you brought friends because i love selling tickets and i love having fucking new people see my shit it's the i my favorite favorite feedback is when people bring their friends or their parents and they have no idea who I am and that person who is not a fan who found out about me that night goes I didn't know who you were but I fucking love the show that to me is the best feedback ever every time I hear that it makes me smile that's awesome because that's totally genuine feedback you know they're not excited to meet me they're not really fans they just saw me do my thing and they were like man I fucking love that. And that's the best. I love that shit. Um, the, and then the, the other best thing I love is, hey, Lewis, will you sign my titties? Absolutely. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I love going to shit by myself. Like, the, dude, benefits of going to shit by yourself, no time constraint, right? Benefits of going to shit by yourself, you can take a detour, right? If you're going to one place and you go, actually, you know what? I want to stop and look in this shop. Fucking go in that store, bro. Browse for as long as you want. You got. It is the worst when I'm like uh, with somebody, and maybe you're at it. Like going to fucking art galleries with jazz is the fucking worst. Now I don't really like art gal- galleries, but when I'm there, I I love it. Like I don't feel the desire to go but when I am there I'm like oh well I'm there I want to learn about the art and I want to look at everything and I think that's really interesting I love that jazz is the opposite right jazz loves going to the art gallery she hates being there She's, she's the type of person that loves the idea of going to an art gallery and walking around and moseying away around the museum and the art and looking and experiencing culture and beauty. But she gets there and the reality of, of a fucking art gallery hits her like a brick and she goes, oh, it's a fucking room with paintings in it. Boring! And she zooms around that shit like it's the fucking NASCAR. Goes around in a big circle as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, I'm still on painting one. She's on painting six going, hurry up! Hurry up, there's more art to see. I'm like, you don't even want to see the art. You want to fucking go home. If I was there by myself, I wouldn't have to deal with that. If she was there by herself, she wouldn't have to deal with me taking a long time. 
That's the opposite problem. You take some cunt to something and they take ages looking at shit or walking slowly. Fucking hurry up, bro. I want to go home. That's the worst shit. Go to shit by yourself, man. If you have no one to bring, just go by yourself and enjoy yourself. It's the best. Seeing a movie by yourself. I've done this before. See a movie by myself. Loved it. Man, that was great. You know what? I want to see another movie. Fucking bang. Two movies one day. You can't do that when you're with someone. No. I want to get some food. Oh, let's have a walk. There's something that I wanted to look at. Fuck your shit. That's what I should do. Next time I'm with, with my friend and we do my thing and then they want to be like, all right, so we did your thing. It's time for my thing. I'll just spit in their eyes. That's what I reckon, guys. Okay, here's the deal. Next time I tour, bring a friend to the show. After the show, spit in their eyes and never see them again. <laughs> yeah, guys, some, some people I see, like they miss out on so much life because they can't, enjoy things without a witness to make them feel like it's okay to enjoy that thing you know what i mean like it's like it's like they need tacit approval from a bystander to like what they like i think it's fucking ridiculous and you, you're just missing out on your life you're missing out on shit that you like do you understand that if i couldn't go to things by myself, I would never do anything. Because I like weird shit. I want to go to a comic convention. Oh, who of my friends likes comic books and hanging out with virgins? Luke? No. Keelan? Nah. Gotta go by myself. I can't roll up with the boys from Frankston to a comic book convention, can I? They'll be like, oh great, nerds, get them. Steal their cameras, stab them. No good. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so go and do shit by yourself. That's all I'm saying. Some of the best times I've ever had have been by myself. That's probably a lie. But I've had very nice times by myself. And it's also just good to fucking just think, man, and be alone with your thoughts, you know? I try to once a month, I don't always do this, but I really try, and I think it's really good, to just leave the house with no phone and just do whatever you want to do with no phone. I think that's really important. The second most important thing is fucking know where you're going because without a phone, I, I am lost. I might as well be in the Sahara Desert. If I go to some place that I've never been to before, even if I've looked it up on a map beforehand and I think I know where I'm going, if I haven't been there before and I have no phone, I'm going to die. I will perish. I will be lost and I will fucking starve to death. I'll piss my pants over. I will die. I might as well be in the Sahara Desert looking for a fucking oasis if I'm in a, if I'm in a part of the city that I haven't been to before and my phone died. I'm going to die next. First casualty, phone. Second casualty, me. Third casualty, everyone dying of laughter when they find out how I died. Yeah, he died because uh, he couldn't find a fucking train station after he went out at 2 p.m. on a Sunday. He got pretty close, but now he's dead. Rest in peace, you fucking idiot. Why didn't he ask for directions? Oh, I don't think he likes talking to strangers. Oh, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> but yeah, man, leaving the house with no phone and just going out, fucking see a movie or go to a store you want to go to and then fucking sit down, have some food, just think, maybe take a notebook, write some stuff, even if it's just thoughts, even if you're not writing something, it's some of the best shit ever. You come home and you're like, man, I know what I'm doing. I know what I want and I know what I'm working for and I know, and I know who I am a little bit better. Because it's, it's so rare, especially with social media, where you're ever by yourself, like truly by yourself. You can be by yourself in your bedroom, but you're on call 24-7. Mum could text you, friends could text you, App notification could go off. Maybe you're playing a game. You've got a team member. You're on call 24-7. Leave that shit at home, bro. 
That's what I want to do, man. I want to I want to do a week. Throw my phone in the fucking ocean. Schedule some videos. Fuck off. Don't tell anyone. Just fuck off somewhere. Not even the wilderness. Just get a hotel in the city by myself. No phone. Just fuck off. Take a book and a notepad and just fuck off. I'm going to do that. When? Well, I could do it. Oh, no, I got the Luke and Lewis tour. Oh, but after that, I could... Oh, no, I need to fly to the Gold Coast and plan what I'm doing next year. I could do it next year. Oh, no, I got a... I got a big thing coming up in January. Oh, maybe after January. Oh, now I'm doing the comedy festival. Oh, well, after the comedy festival, I'm probably going to record a comedy special then. Oh, well, after the comedy special. No, I got to promote it and then release it. Oh, well, after the release. Oh, no, I think I want to want to go to America and and uh, and then maybe maybe if I can get a green card, do some shows. Well, after that. Oh, well, after that, I'm probably going to do the UK because uh, I know I can do shows there because you know there's the treaty and everything. Well, after the UK. Oh, well, then it'll be Christmas. Oh, well, yeah, you know, right, you're right. I'll just kill myself. <laughs> I don't know. I'll find the time. That's the thing. You gotta fucking find the time. Alan, we going for you. All right, forty minutes. All right, all right. It's time for the miscellaneous bit at the end. So, if you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of this podcast. I'm apologizing to you for doing this. I really do want to take it out. I don't want to do it anymore. But you know, uh, I've got KPIs. I've got key performance indicators. I got things to check off. I got stuff to do um, and all that kind of shit. So, man, it has to be done. Uh, podcast at lewspears.com. If you have uh, any uh, advice that you need, um, if you have a funny story to tell me, I would love to hear it. Just summarize it in the headline. Um, try to keep it concise. And please, for the love of God, fucking check your spelling. Okay. Anyway, uh, where are we? Um, da, 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 da. oh, this is a good one. Um, my parents are racist, and it is actually ruining people's lives. And I don't know what to do about it. Please help. Fuck, you have come to the wrong place, my friend. Dear Lewis, please keep me anonymous, as I am ashamed of my family. All right, my oldest brother has an investment property, but all he did was pay for it. And my mum took care of all the real estate stuff, etc. What do you mean all he did was pay for it? That's an incredible fucking achievement. Oh, all he did was pay for it. Yeah, bro. How else do you get a fucking house? My brother is almost 30. He should be doing that shit himself, but oh well. Not really. I mean, I honestly, here's how if if I ever, ever get to the point where I can fucking get an investment property, maybe in 2070 when they cost $2 because the market crashes after all this fucking horse shit, I am absolutely not running that shit myself. I'll get a property manager. If I could pay mum some money, she's doing that shit. If I get someone else to do it. Could you imagine me as a fucking, as, as your landlord? Hi, hello, um, my, uh, my, my plumbing has fucked. The plumbing's fucked. There's there's water coming out of the toilet and then the roof is wet and it's caved in. I've called you about it three times this month and you haven't come over. Yeah, I'm uh, actually going to see a comedy show by myself and I'm leaving my phone at home. So fuck you. Bye. I already know that if I ran the fucking investment property, I would go to jail for just like negligence. I couldn't be trusted with it. Anyway, the first tenants left the house an absolute mess. They were people of a certain cultural background. And immediately, my mum assumed that the entire culture didn't care for houses or cleanliness. Fucking hell. Yeah, oh, one Asian person did this once, so they're all fucking bad. Um, yeah, I was walking past an Italian person and they bloody coughed without covering their mouth. Bloody Italian people got no hygiene. I've never seen one cough and cover their mouth. Bloody Italians, I tell you, we should have kicked them out. We never should have left them in. Let them in. Bloody, what do we even need bricklayers for? Get them out. Anyway, the first tenants. Um, this is obviously not true, but I think my mum is dumb, especially since she came to Australia as a refugee and experienced racism. When she, Bro, I got to say, no one does racism like re like immigrants. For sure. Like, they're like, oh, I bloody assimilated. Why can't these guys? Um, excuse me. Your parents didn't assimilate. You did because you were born here. And and if you met your parents now, you probably wouldn't like them because they 
really struggle assimilating because they live their whole life in another culture and then they've come here and that's why they're not really, you know, assimilating and they do stuff with their own culture. Oh, no. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, she said she was going to call the real estate agents and not to accept and tell them not to accept people from a certain background. I said, no, mum, that's racist. You can't do that. Then my little brother said, you can't just tell the real estate to be racist. They won't do it. Yeah, they, well, they, they might, they fucking shouldn't. Then my mum said, they'll understand. And they did understand my mum's racism and they did not accept people from that certain culture. That's fucking crazy. That's like, that's super legal. Because it's one thing to have unconscious bias. Like, I guess... It's hard to detect that when you do have that yourself. You need, kind of need somebody else to point that out. Like, hey, did you know that you hate uh, women? Oh, oh, fuck. I had no idea. Yeah, you, uh, you never hire them and you always speak poorly of them. It's probably because your mum was a cunt. Oh, I should work on that. You kind of need someone else to point out your unconscious bias. That was not an example from my life. My mum's lovely and I love chicks. Unless they're hot. <laughs> but nobody likes those chicks I'm telling you bro very rarely do you meet an, an incredibly beautiful 9 out of 10 girl and be like gee she's got a great personality to match they don't and you know why because they have to get rid of it and become cunts by necessity because men are animals we see a fucking beautiful woman and we go bro I gotta be around her and then women who grow up beautiful have to deal with 100% of men they come in contact with wanting to fuck them they have to to turn into cunts to survive bro because otherwise they would have a phone full of texts going off every fucking second um i don't know if my oldest brother is racist or if he feels as though he's a beta motherfucker and he's in a position where he can't argue with my parents unless it's something he's really passionate about i understand the situation he's in but surely he can stand up for equality when it's affecting other people's lives I'm 19 years old and my parents never take me seriously. What do I do? This happened months ago and I'm still angry. Um, okay. Two ways you can go about it. Option one, tell your brother, tell him to man up. It is his property. This is, look, okay. Ultimately, before I give you options, you can't fix this. It is not your property. Uh, yes, it is your parents. You can, you can try to tell them to do something. You can try and convince them. But at the end of the day, this is not in your control. So you could maybe fix it. Maybe. That's on the cards. But if you can't, it's not your fault. And you shouldn't stress yourself out or ruin your family over it. Because yes, it is a bad thing. But sometimes all you can do is try to do better yourself. Because so many people fucking kill themselves trying to change somebody else and sometimes people are cunts anyway uh you should talk to your brother and tell him the situation tell him how you feel tell him be honest face to face do not text him don't write this down be a fucking man and talk to him uh in person not on the phone and tell him all the situation what you feel how you know that it's incredibly racist and you should Show him how much trouble he will get in if he's caught. Because if, you know, hopefully he's a good person and he goes, oh, yeah, obviously we can't discriminate based on race. I will tell the real estate agent to let in anybody because if, you know, that's obviously a bad thing. But if that doesn't convince him, show him how much he'll get fucking fined by the government for not renting to a specific race or ethnicity or religious group. Show him that. The penalties for that are enormous, as they should be. Because fuck. You should definitely... Yeah, I would just I would just tell you, brother, you know, this is bad for, for these reasons, and I feel this. Don't get into an argument, because it doesn't sound like it's his fault. It sounds like his mum's made the decision and then told the real estate agent. It sounds like he's just trying to go hands off and, you know, let your money work for you. You know, that kind of shit. Residual income. The key to success, do that. Um, and if that doesn't work, show him how much fucking trouble and money it will cost him. And if that doesn't work, do the same with your mum. And if that doesn't work, that's it. 
unless you want to fucking report your own blood to the housing commission or whatever it is, I'm sure there's some kind of discrimination board that'll look at it, but... Uh, one, there's no way to prove it unless the real estate has literally written in their internal notes, do not lease to Asians on request of client. Unless they've got that written down somewhere, there is no way to prove that they are discriminating. And the only thing that you will do is cause an insane argument within your family, which I guess you could do. But is it worth the trouble in your own life? Maybe not. And will it solve anything? Probably not. Because systems stacked up against anyone who's broke. Uh, So, yeah, man, that's what I would do is I would just have a heart-to-heart with your brother. It's his fucking property and his mum is his employee. Uh, and show him how much trouble he'll get in. Do the same with your mum. And if you get to a point where they won't do anything... Sometimes what you can do, and this works really well, obviously you can never, you, you, it's a lesson you need to learn. And I struggled this when, when I was like 18, 19, especially when I was working with, working with people who, who wouldn't bend or, or, or who had incredibly bad habits, they wouldn't kick or this or that. This goes for friendships or professional life or when I, when I still had a job that I really struggled with not being able to fix people, I guess, who had problems or who had issues, even if they were harming themselves. I really struggle with just trying to help and trying to fix. You just have to get to the realization of the only person you are in control of is you. People aren't even in in control of their own children. My mum tried that. Didn't work. (laughs) You're the only person you can control. And you can influence other people a little bit, but you cannot change them. Change comes from within. So if you get to a point where you have uh, communicated your feelings in a way that you think is reasonable and well, and you, and you also think they understand what you feel, because it comes back to that debate conversation thing, right? You can debate the fuck out of someone, win the debate, but at the end of the day, they're going to go home going, yeah, I guess he kind of trashed me, but I still believe what I believe. That's not debating is not communicating. If you can communicate and also you think they understand what you feel, and they still don't want to do what you want to do, this kind of goes for anything, you can just go, okay, well, if you don't do that, or if you continue doing this, I just want you to know that I really don't like that, and it makes me disappointed in you, and it makes me feel bad that you do that, because I think that it's wrong. And you can keep doing it, but I want you to know that it makes me think less of you. Okay? Okay? love you and then you end the conversation on a good note give him a hug over and then it is and then what you've done is you have communicated what you want communicated your issues you've done your bit and then you have removed yourself from responsibility because that's the thing if you if you tell them everything you want to tell them and they still keep doing it but you don't remove yourself from it even though you're not in control of that situation you will feel like it's your fault and you have to change something that you can't change and it's just going to be stress, anxiety and anger and that sucks. If you throw in what you can and then step back and and then you just have to let them go and do whatever they do and then, you know, maybe they'll keep doing it or maybe in a month they'll go, you know what, fucking this cunt was right. I am being an asshole. I should stop this or I should start this or I should change my behavior because a lot of the time... I mean, I know I'm like this. If someone raises a big issue, I struggle with fucking changing my behavior straight away. I'm better at it now, but I used to go, oh, I used to get defensive and locked up about it and I would do nothing and change nothing. And then it would take me like two weeks to go, you know what? They were right. I should fix that. Sometimes people just need to do that because no one want. you can't control people and no one wants to be controlled. So a lot of the time, You'll probably find yourself doing this. If someone comes up to you with a problem they have, that is 100% your fault. And both of you know that it's your fault. It sucks to go, yeah, you're right. 
I'll change. It sucks not to admit that you're wrong, but to admit that someone else is right. A lot, that's hard for me. I struggle with that. And so do a lot of other people. Sometimes you have to communicate your issues and then step back and let them change it and fix it on their own, of their own choice. Because if you go, oh, you're doing this wrong and you have to fix it today. The only reason they fixed it was because you told them to. It's not a genuine change. They need to, you know, understand what you've said, process it, and then come to their own decision and their own conclusion and their own reason for changing if they decide to do so. Because, oh, because he said so is not a change that is going to last. Like, oh, I'm never going to be a cunt again because James told me that I was a cunt. And that's the only reason. It should be, I'm never going to be a cunt because being a cunt makes other people bad and making people bad makes me feel bad. I will change. I will no longer be a cunt. It has to come from within, all right? And that's where I'm going to end uh, this week's podcast with some fucking sappy talk about, no, oh, this is communication. Yeah, you didn't think you get that from me, huh, cunt? All right? That's the end of the uh, episode. I've got a bi-monthly bull coming for you soon. My break is over. I've uh, decided that I'm going to be filming at nighttime here when nobody's here because uh, daytime is too distracting. So I've worked out my workflow. Uh, thank you very much to everyone who came to the No Slide Season 2. Our best tour of my life. Super, super fun. Uh, and uh, yeah, really cool. It's theatres, bro. A thousand people in Melbourne. That is crazy. 600 in Brisbane. Fuck yeah. And I'm gearing up for this comedy special. We've been touring the Luke and Lewis show live. Oh, by the way, go and watch the Luke and Lewis live shows. Go and fucking watch them. We have filmed them really well. They are so much fun. Each show is unique and lots of crowd work. And every show has been planned differently and has something different happen. My favorite show is Melbourne. Uh, if you are only going to watch one, please watch Melbourne. We do an award show called The Loogies. It's a parody of The Logies, and it's like a recap of our whole uh, year of doing the show. And it, and it really feels like a triumphant, like, yeah, we did it, and, and we left radio, and we were okay uh, after it, and we're bigger and better than ever. It felt like a real, real nice conclusion to this year of the Luke and Lewis show and the tour has been fucking incredible and every single show is available to watch on YouTube for free just search Luke and Lewis and don't you dare say I don't do anything for you cunts all right um so yeah go and check that out and thank you so much I'm in a really good place uh uh, thanks to you guys I've had a little bit of a break and I'm sorry for being a little bit inconsistent these past few weeks especially with the tour it has gotten crazy but we are hiring a new person um a new editor to help out so hopefully next year when i when i do shows there won't be any interruption and i would i would love to do what i did in the first six months six to eight months of this year i would love to do for an entire year bro imagine how big my channel would have been if i kept that six months going until the until now would have been as as big as it is now would have been three times bigger if i kept that going but you know, stand-up's the priority. I uh, have to work on that. I have to be a better comedian always, and I have to give you guys my best when I'm on stage. And unfortunately, the videos have to suffer for that in the meantime, but hopefully not forever. All right, thank you so much. Support me on Patreon if you want to help make this possible. I've been Lewis Spears. I'm back to the podcast. I will talk to you next Sunday. And, oh yeah, I'm flying to Perth to film 10 episodes of Cooking Without Instructions. It's fucking coming, boys and girls. See ya.